Good evening. Welcome to Carol's Books and Storytime. And um, this evening I have a story for you that's really, really old story, but I think it's I think it's just as true today as it was when I read it, first of all, when I was a child. And it comes from a very old book called Uncle Arthur's Bedtime Stories. And it's called Jane's Pet. Jane Austen was a very fortunate little girl. She had a beautiful big dog, all of her very own. Rover had come to the house as a puppy when Jane was very young. And the two had grown up together. They loved each other very much. Sometimes Jane would pretend Rover was sick. Then she would dress up as a nurse and try and give him some medicine out of a bottle. But Rover was far too wise for that. He didn't mind her tying him all up in bandages, but he did draw the line at taking medicine unless it was something with plenty of sugar in it. Rover was like the little lamb in Mary's Little Lamb. He followed Jane everywhere she went. If she went into town shopping for her mother, Rover would go too. He even went to school with her and it was the biggest job in the world to keep him out of the classroom. However, he was very obedient and when Jane said no, Rover, as though she really meant it, Rover would always do what he was told. Then one night, Rover disappeared. In the morning, Jane went to his kennel as usual to give him his breakfast. But he was not there. All day she waited for him to come back, but he did not return. Mama, she said at last, I must go and look for Rover. I'm sure he must be dreadfully hungry by this time. But Mama persuaded her to wait until the next morning to see if he would come back. But morning came and there was no sign of Rover. Then they both began to get alarmed and made inquiries amongst the neighbours, even going to the police station, but in vain. And when Jane reached home after school and learned that Rover had not yet returned, she made up her mind to go in search for him. She knew one place that Rover liked very much and it occurred to her that he might have gone there and met with some kind of accident. It was a small forest a little way out of town where there were loads and loads of rabbits <clears throat> and Rover loved to chase rabbits. Jane was so determined to find her beloved dog that she had no fear of the woods so the lonely road or the lonely road that she had to tread to get there. Bravely she stepped out calling Rover, Rover, Rover every few yards but there was no response no happy barking rover came bounding to answer her call. She began to get a little bit discouraged and wondered whether it was really worthwhile going on. Then she decided she'd walk another 300 steps before giving up the search. She began to count the steps and in a little while passed 100, then 200, then 300. She was just turning around to go home when from somewhere on her right came a low wail as if someone was in pain. Poor little Jane was very much frightened for it suddenly occurred to her that she was all alone in the woods. Then the sound came again, a little different this time. A new idea came to Jane. She thought she'd heard the noise before, sometimes in the middle of the night, when Rover was lonesome or perhaps when he was trying to sing to the moon as some dogs do. Again the sound came, this time a little more distinctly. And Jane now felt sure that this was Rover's voice. It took a lot of courage to do it, but Jane was so determined to rescue her beloved pet that she turned off the footpath and made her way through the trees in the direction from which the sound had come. As she went on, the wail became clearer and clearer until at last, peering through some bushes, she discovered Rover lying on the ground with his front paw caught in a steel trap. Oh, my poor, poor Rover, she cried, kneeling down beside him. Somehow I must get you free. 
Jane had not seen a trap like this before, but she worked away at it until at last she had the teeth open wide enough to let poor Rover pull his foot out. Rover wanted to say how thankful he was that he was too weak to give more than a faint wag of his tail. Jane had brought some biscuits with her in the hopes of finding her pet, and now she gave them to him. How glad he was for some food. He'd not eaten anything for two whole days. Then there was the job of getting Rover home. He couldn't put his poor foot to the ground and he had to limp all the way back on three legs. It took them a long time. And Jane wished many times that she could carry him. But of course, he was much too big for that. However, at last they got home. And in her delight at seeing Rover back again, Mama forgot to scold Jane for going away all by herself. She said she thought Jane was a very brave little girl to go so far in search of her pet, but she mustn't do it again without letting her mother know. And now Jane had to be a real nurse to Rover. A doctor came and put his leg in bandages and said it'd be a week or two before he would walk properly again. So Jane gave him special care and all the food he liked best. Rover never forgot Jane's kindness to him. And when he was well again, he loved his little mistress more than ever. And in his doggy way, he seemed to try to show her how much he loved her. He never let her get far out of his sight. One afternoon, some months later, Jane took Rover with her for a walk by the river. He loved to go there for there were so many things to chase. It was a very pretty walk and they'd often taken it together before with Mother. She, mother had told Jane that she must never leave the foot, footpath and it was only on this condition that she was allowed to go there. But somehow this time, Jane forgot. She noticed some pretty flowers growing down by the water's edge and thought it'd be nice to pick them and take them home. She felt sure Mama wouldn't mind, especially when she saw the flowers. But the bank of the river was very slippy and much steeper than Jane had first thought. Tripping over a tree root, she fell forward, rolled over and over and splashed into the water. In a moment, she was caught by the swiftly flowing tide and carried out into the stream. Help! she screamed. <clears throat> there was no one about. But Rover, chasing the cows in the field, heard the cry. He looked around and seeing that Jane was no longer on the bank where he had left her, seemed to guess at once what had happened. Like a flash, he bounded to the riverside. There was a spring and a splash, and a moment later, <coughs> Rover was swimming as hard as he could towards the struggling, spluttering figure of little Jane. Now it was Rover's turn to help Jane. The brave dog put every ounce of his strength into the race to save his mistress. On and on and on he swam. Just in time he reached her and caught her clothes in his teeth. Then came the hard struggle of swimming with her to the bank. But he did it. And as they were nearing the bank, Jane was able to catch hold of a tree stump, which helped them both to scramble ashore. What happened when at last the two soaked, bedraggled friends reached home, I must leave you to imagine. But when Mama heard Jane's story, she didn't know whether to scold or to cry or to laugh for very gladness that they'd both come back safely. One thing I can tell you, and that is that Rover was given the most wonderful supper that evening that a dog ever enjoyed. Jane and Rover stayed the closest and best of friends as long as he lived. And all the children around who heard of Rover's gallant rescue learned the lesson that it pays to be kind to animals. Right, no doubt you'd have noticed that there are some little things in that story that tell you that children wouldn't be allowed to go off by themselves these days. So it's a very old story. It's at least 50 years old. All right. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. But the lesson is there that you must be kind to animals. In fact, you must be kind to people as well, because to be kind is the best thing. To be horrible, well, it's not very good, is it? OK, I hope you enjoyed that story of Jane's pet, Rover. Bye.